everyone and welcome to this video today we are watching the Star Wars the complete canon timeline we're going to be splitting this in parts Judy knows nothing about Star Wars so this should be interesting mm -hmm. um, so yeah we'll be watching the first part today and the next part will be really some point in the near future thanks for watching and let's start oh yeah watch the original video as well done by uh, Star Wars Explained um yeah let's let's begin Hundreds of thousands of years before the destruction of the first Death Star in the Battle of Yavin, or BBY, the galaxy forms. An energy field known as the Force comes into being on a mysterious planet near the galaxy center called the Wellspring of Life. Three immensely powerful beings known as the Father, the Son, and the Daughter are all born as well. The Daughter embodies the light side of the Force, the Son embodies the dark, and their Father keeps their powers in check in the ethereal realm of Mortis. Over time, sentient mm. species evolve on several planets. On the core world... You see those characters in the Clone Wars show. Okay. Coruscant, cities begin construction. It is believed to be the homeworld of humankind. Interstellar travel is developed, allowing for expansion and trade between planets. On the edge of wild space, Batuu is colonized and becomes a central hub at the crossroads of several trading routes. Spacefarers encounter massive creatures in deep space called Pergil, who are able to travel across the galaxy at the speed of light. By studying their abilities, hyperdrive technology is created, allowing for further expansion of the known galaxy. But a number of supernovas send debris and destruction across a large area of the galaxy. Entire systems are demolished, sparking more supernovas, making hyperspace prospecting nearly impossible in what becomes known as the Unknown Regions. The literal or figurative Prime Jedi creates the Jedi Order on the planet Octo. The Jedi are able to feel and control the Force. They devote themselves to the light side, constructing a temple and village on their world. The Jedi become known for the pursuit of peace and justice and the preservation of life above all else across the galaxy. Through the use of Force-assisted... What, what you will learn over time as well, the Jedi are very flawed. Like, you'll find yourself actually agreeing with, like, the Sith over time. Okay. Which is... Don't, which is not good when you can agree with the yeah, with the bad with the bad guys. The bad guys. The Sith are meant to be, yeah. Okay. But as I said, a lot more people seem to understand the Sith a lot more. Okay. Hyperspace navigation. A Jedi scout discovers the planet Ilum on the edge of the unknown regions. It is rich in a Force-sensitive mineral known as Kyber crystals, which the Jedi use to construct a new weapon called a lightsaber. 22 prominent planets, including Coruscant, Alderaan, Chandrilla, and Corellia, form an alliance to help one another thrive. A new sect of Jedi called the Ordu Aspectu seeks immortality through a combination of the Force and artificial intelligence. Their leader, Rur, uploads his knowledge into a crystal, which becomes self-aware and aggressive, killing its creators. The true Rur sacrifices his life to deactivate the machine and hide their citadel in deep space where no one will find it. Mm -hmm. The Planetary Alliance expands for thousands of years, welcoming more and more worlds to their organization. I don't really know the much. Jedi also spread I don't really know much about this time in Star Wars history, so this is interesting to me. But their influence to planets strong in the Force, like Ossus, which replaces Octo as their cultural center. The Temple of the Kyber is constructed on Jeddah, which becomes an important world to several Force-related religions. A rogue Jedi seeks more power through the oh, use of the dark side of the Force. He splits from the Order, taking several followers with him, founding the Sith Order. They battle the Jedi in a con- Yes. So he found the Sith then? Yeah. Not a good man then. They're the bad Well, he was originally a Jedi, but split from them. So he's a it's rogue. All, it's all easy to call them, to call Siths evil. So is he a rogue then? Yeah, he's rogue. But over time, you'll learn that Siths more and more have a reason to do it. Did the Sith have the red lightsabers? Yes. Conflict known as the Hundred Year Darkness. The Sith are defeated and exiled, retreating to the planet Moraband. There they rebuild and plot their revenge against the Jedi. Around the same time, the Jedi encounter a warrior people known as the Mandalorians. Mandalorians. Fearing the Jedi Order's abilities through the Force, the Mandalorians develop weapons and technology to fight them on equal ground, sparking the Mandalorian Wars. The final battle takes place on the planet Mandalore, the capital of the Mandalorian Empire. The surface of the world is devastated and scorched into a lifeless desert, forcing the surviving Mandalorians to live in domed cities. 
In the chaos of the unknown regions, a species called the Chiss carve out an area of space they call the Chiss Ascendancy. A rival species launches an attack that drives the Chiss back to their homeworld, Chilla. There they unleash a secret weapon known as the Star Flash, which obliterates the enemy fleet thanks to the sacrifice of 20 Chiss members of the Myth family. The Myth are honored by becoming one of the nine ruling families of the Chiss Ascendancy, but the activation of Star Flash dims Chilla's sun, requiring the surviving Chiss people to move underground to survive. Back in the known galaxy, oh. human refugees fleeing civil war discover the planet Naboo. So the Chiss don't sound like they're very important now, but one of the best characters in Star Wars comes from them, and he's called Admiral Thrawn. A Thrawn. Yeah. And basically, why he's such a big deal in Star Wars is because the Empire hate aliens, but he becomes a Grand Admiral in the Empire. Big deal though, right? It's a massive deal. Remember, they hate aliens. If you're not human, you're scum. I want to know they hate them. No, no. So, um, sorry. Yeah. So, if you if you're not human, they hate you. Okay. Like, so to see a non-human rise to that level, where he's actually he he speaks to the emperor on yeah. not on equal grounds, but he can speak to like high-ranking people in the Empire on equal ground. So okay. it says a lot. So it's a big deal. Yeah, you'll, hopefully he, he'll explain more about them. The native Gungans wage war on the Outsiders, but a tenuous peace is eventually reached. The Gungans isolate themselves from the humans by building cities in Naboo's lakes and swamps. The Sith begin creating massive super weapons using giant kyber crystals. On the planet Malachor, the Jedi uncover one such weapon constructed by Darth Tannis. They attack the weapon, and every Jedi and Sith participant in the battle is petrified in what becomes known as the Great Scourge of Malachor. A Jedi Master named Radaki leaves the Jedi Order, believing he should be allowed to retain his family ties and wealth. He falls to the dark side, becoming the Sith Lord Darth Krall. A group of warriors called the Amaxine encounter the Dringir, sentient carnivorous plants that have a strong connection to the dark side. That's a the warriors plant? construct a space. <laughs> I know, right? I thought the same. That's a plant. <laughs> station as a base to defeat the creatures, but are instead overtaken by them. The station is infested with the Dringir until it's discovered by Darth Krall and his followers. They are able to put the monsters in stasis through the creation of four Force-imbued statues. The Sith Order continues to wage war against the Jedi, who by now have begun working alongside the group of allied planets. The Sith conquer Coruscant and build a shrine there. A disturbed, Force-sensitive artist named Momin is discovered by the Sith Lady Shah. She trains him in the dark side of the Force until he betrays and murders her. He builds a super weapon that he believes will be the ultimate expression of his horrific artistry and unleashes it on the planet Mustafar. The Jedi stop his destruction and the interrupted ritual traps Momin's spirit in his own mask, which is taken by the Jedi for safekeeping. Perhaps in- Yeah, he, I think he, he reappears later on. Yeah, it's stuck in his own mask though. Ow. Yeah, he's one of the he's what I think he's one of the Sith because he's considered an ancient Sith. Mm -hmm. uh, the Emperor, who is a Sith as well, the mm -hmm. Emperor sees him as like not superior, but he sees him as someone to learn from. Oh, okay. Because Sith learn from each other. Oh, okay. Most Jedi contradict each other, but and Sith learn from each Sith other. Sith help each other. Don't help each other in not in not. On purpose, they help each other learn what from their mistakes. By accident, they help each other. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. In Momin's very attack, the husband of Mustafar's leader, Lady Corvax, perishes. She is Force-sensitive and attempts to resurrect Lord Corvax using a sacred Mustafarian artifact called the Bright Star. This ritual also fails, and the energy released by the relic transforms the once green planet into a lava-covered hellscape. The Jedi accept the first Mandalorian into their order named Tar Vizsla. He creates a unique black-bladed lightsaber called the Darksaber. After nearly 4,000 years of conflict, the Sith Wars come to an end. The final battle takes place on Coruscant and the Sith are defeated once again. Although the Jedi believe them to be extinct, Darth Bane escapes as the sole survivor. Realizing that the Sith Order failed due to thousands of individual members each fighting for power and control amongst themselves, he establishes the Rule of Two. He takes a single apprentice and continues the Sith Order in the shadows, planning to grow their inf- Yeah, so before then, there were multiple Sith who all used to fight each other, kill each other and everything else. Yeah. But then he came along and was like, right, there can only be two of you to exist at one time now. A Master and Apprentice. 
and then, okay. then it can carry on you know the process can carry on so then keep going yeah and it's easier to remain undercover and in the shadows when there's only two of you makes sense yeah keep the secret the secret. force and galactic politics over the course of generations in the wake of the Sith Wars, the Planetary Alliance is reformed into an official government called the Galactic Republic, setting its capital on Coruscant. Four Jedi Masters construct a great Jedi temple on top of the Sith Shrine, hoping to eliminate its dark influence. This new temple replaces Ossus as the headquarters of the Jedi Order and strengthens the relationship of the Force users and the new Galactic government. After Tar Vizsla's death, the Darksaber is kept by the Jedi until other members of the Mandalorian clan Vizsla infiltrate the Jedi Temple and reclaim it. The blade becomes an heirloom and symbol of power for their family. The Republic grows for centuries, welcoming new member worlds, including Naboo. Naboo. The Naboo? Drone age has begun That's basically the Australia of Souls. Pretty. Yes. Take out Pretty, but Republic deadly. Pathfinder teams yeah. of Jedi and hyperspace prospectors map new hyperspace lanes, improving travel, communication, and safety across the Outer Rim. The Jedi establish several outposts across the galaxy. This period becomes known as the High Republic. Although the Republic is at peace, local and planetary disputes still erupt in the ever-expanding frontier. The Jedi Council receives a distress call from the planet Turak, where raiders are attacking a small village. One of the Grand Masters of the Yoda. Order, a small but powerful being Yoda. named Yoda, travels there and lives among its You've heard of Yoda. Yoda? Yeah, I know you do. Master Yoda. I thought Grogu and Yoda were the same thing, though. They are the same. They're the same species. I, same race. I thought they were the same person. It's native people until he helps the two civilizations of the planet find peace. A Republic Pathfinder team, including two Jedi named Porter Ingall and Barash, also broker a difficult ceasefire on the war-torn planet Ganzavor. The experience leads Barash to doubt her interpretations of the will of the Force, and she takes a vow to step away from the Jedi Order until she finds her confidence once again. On Takodana, a young Jedi Padawan named Sav Malagon runs away from her Jedi outpost, seeking adventure with the Pirate Queen Maz Kanata as she and her crew fight against a rival gang called the Dank Grax. A treasure hunter and hyperspace prospector named Radakaz Dobbs discovers the mysterious planet X during his explorations in the Outer Rim. There he finds planet. the egg of some unknown creature. He strands the rest of his Pathfinder team on the planet Gloam and seeks a buyer for his strange new relic. He finds one on the planet Dalna in the form of the Mother, the leader of a cult called the Path of the Open Hand that believes the Force should not be used by groups like the Jedi. She recruits Dobbs to her cause and takes the egg, which hatches into a horrific monster. When two Jedi come to investigate the Path, the nameless creature feeds off of their life energy, transforming them into husks. The neighboring planets That's of Irem and Erino good. experience generations of war. Taken? That's not a good thing at all. No. That's not a good thing at all. Maybe we should smash the egg. Throw, throw it in lava. Yeah, my... Throw it off the planet. Hmm. Although they are not members of the Republic, Jedi and politicians lead peace talks which conclude with a political marriage between the next generation of rulers. The signing of a treaty is proudly announced to be held on Jeddah during the world's Festival of Balance. Two members of the path, cousins named Marta and Yana Ro, take up leadership positions in the cult. Marta becomes a spiritual guide, and Yana gains control over the beast, which comes to be known as the Leveler. The Mother, the Rose, and several other members of the path head to Jeddah under the guise of joining the Convocation of the Force, a group of various Force religions who gather to share and discuss their philosophies. The Herald of the Path demands the Convocation disband, and when he is denied, he incites a riot and sets the Leveler loose in the Holy City, which spreads fear and panic Ooh. throughout the crowd. The Mother also sabotages the peace talks of Irem and Erino, sparking further conflict between the two worlds. During the riot, the Herald and Yana find and steal an artifact that will allow them to better control the Leveler. Several Jedi and the two newly married rulers of Irem and Erino travel to Dalna to investigate the Path of the Open Hand and their intentions. They are- They look like Cthulhu. They don't look friendly. Yes, they look like Cthulhu. I just think their name should be Cupcake. Cupcake. <laughs> They're attacked by cult members calling themselves the Path of the Closed Fist and the Leveler feeds on more Jedi. The Battle of Dalna is bloody and both sides are met with heavy losses. The armies of Irem and Erino work together to provide reinforcements and defeat the Path, but the Mother escapes. The Jedi survivors of the Leveler agree to keep the mysterious creature's existence a secret until they can learn more about it. Irem and Erino maintain their tense relationship for over 100 more years until a criminal syndicate kidnaps royals from each planet. Both worlds request assistance from the Jedi Order. When the situation is resolved, Irem and Erino finally settle their differences and begin working more closely with the Republic. 
25 years later in that very system, Chancellor Lena So constructs a space station called Starlight Beacon, hoping to continue uniting the Outer Rim, inviting systems into the constantly growing Republic. Their expansion is resisted by a group of marauders called the Nile, who are led by a descendant of Marta and Yanaro named Markion. The Nile are able to weaponize hyperspace thanks to a force-sensitive hostage that? they have named Mari Santeca, who's can- It's a person, huh? Yeah, why is he in there? Because they're harnessing their power. Oh, lovely. Connection with the Force allows her to find secret hyperspace paths through the galaxy. Using her abilities, the Nile engineer the destruction of a Republic transport ship as it travels through hyperspace. Its debris emerges into real space across the galaxy at terrible speeds, threatening the lives of countless Outer Rim citizens. The Jedi heroically save as many people as they can, becoming symbols of hope. The debris is eventually contained, but the event comes to be known as the Great Disaster. In the midst of the chaos in the Outer Rim, Markion takes several hostages, including a captured Jedi Master named Loden Greatstorm. A group of Padawans under the tutelage of Yoda stop a Nile Yoda. attack on the planet Trimant IV, home to the few surviving members of the Path of the Open Hand. There they discover and take in a young Force-sensitive girl named Zine, who has been keeping her abilities a secret. Her apparent betrayal leads her best friend, Krix, to join the attacking Nile. Markion also abducts an elder of the path named Tromac, who leads Ro to his ancestor's long-lost weapon, the Leveler. The Nile bomb a Republic transport, stranding the young Jedi Knight Vernestra Ro, her Padawan Emery, and a young crystal researcher named Avon Staros on a nearby planet until they can be rescued. Hyperlanes are temporarily closed for safety, which strands Padawan Wreath Silas and a few other Jedi on the ancient Amaxine space station. Believing the Sith statues to be a threat, the Jedi remove them, inadvertently awakening the Dringir. Ah, so they were mentioned a minute ago. That's the plan, isn't it? Yes. So it's been abandoned for years at this point. I think we should have left him alone. Yeah, but they wouldn't know that. <sighs> Would they? I think he's a weed killer. Nile ally themselves with the creatures, spreading their spores across the Outer Rim to keep the Jedi occupied and distracted. Their attempts to stop the Dringir lead them into a tenuous partnership with the Hut clans, who are also under attack. The Hut cartel are uh, the slug people. Ew. Back from the carnivorous plants. A Hut named Jabba attempts to sabotage the Alliance for his own gain, but his plot is discovered and stopped by the Padawan students of Yoda. With the help of the Huts, the Jedi are able to track down the Dringir homeworld, and their great progenitor is captured, putting all the other Dringir across the galaxy back into stasis. Chancellor So holds a Republic Fair on the planet Fallow, inviting citizens across the Outer Rim to share their cultures with one another. The Nile mounts a massive strike on the fair. Although the Jedi fight bravely, the attack is devastating. The Jedi track the Nile back to their base, launching a counter-assault where Loden Greatstorm is being held. He is rescued, but Markion unleashes the Leveler, which turns the Jedi Master to dust. Markion and the rest of the Nile mm -hmm. retreat in the confusion. He sacrifices the lives of many of his soldiers to rediscover Planet X, where he is able to gather more of the nameless creatures. A Jedi investigator named Imrit Kaptor teams up with a private eye named Cyan Holt to learn more about Loden's death. Vernestra, Emery, and Wreath team up to investigate reports of a new Nile weapon called the Gravity's Heart that can disrupt the use of hyperspace. They discover a space station where Vernestra meets Mari Santeca, who gives the Jedi one final hyperspace path before dying. The Jedi and the Republic then destroy the Gravity's Heart. Zine grows close with one of the Padawans that saved her from Trimant IV, Luke. I'm very clueless about this. Why is she pink? This is Star Wars. So why is she pink? She could be an alien. Cool, good alien. I was, I was about to say, I don't know much about this period in Star Wars at all. Like, uh, I know nothing Did about it. Did you learn some stuff? Yeah, I've learned some stuff of you. I learned everything. Now my brain's up. Ula <laughs> Talasola. On Takodana, they fight the Nile alongside Maz Kanata and Sav Malagon, who is now a Jedi Master. One of Markion Rowe's top lieutenants, Lorna D, is captured by the Republic. They mistakenly come to believe that she is the leader of the Nile and pursue her across the galaxy when she escapes custody. The Jedi Master Avar Chris becomes obsessed with her capture. She sends the newly promoted Jedi Knight. Oh, Trandoshan's a Jedi. So, a Trandoshan are like lizard people. They have lizards now too. Yeah, that believe in hunting. Trin is undercover within Info. Nile ranks to find D, but she is exposed to the leveler, which nearly kills her. Just 12 short hours until work. Oh, mm. Extra gum. Chew good. I don't see how gum can stop you from going to work. So. 
Avon Staros is kidnapped by the Nile and brought to Dalna. She is forced to use her knowledge of crystals to help engineer a natural disaster to distract the Jedi from a larger attack. She attempts to sabotage their efforts until she is saved by Vernestra, but the planet still suffers catastrophic damage. The Republic uses a luxury starliner called the Halcyon to tow Starlight Beacon through hyperspace to Dalna to offer relief. Lula is given command of a mission to the planet Dalhar Hyde, where she, Zine, and the other Padawans successfully capture Krix. Lula is offered knighthood, but her developing relationship with Zine prevents her from accepting. After a long hunt for Lorna D, Avar yep. Chris nearly killed- That's normal in Star Wars. Sounds, sounds completely normal. It's in Star Wars, Han. It's, a, it's meant to be fantasy. It's breaking by Brago Kabui. It's nothing not hard. He's the Nile member, but is pulled back from the brink of darkness- That alien scares me. Mm. By Kiev. They capture alien? Lorna and take her yes. back to Starlight Beacon for questioning. A Nile scientist named Dr. Uttersond attempts to sell one of the nameless creatures on the black market, but he is caught by Imric and Cyan. He explains that they are called the Shriekere, which translates to Eaters of the Force. With this new information, they also head to Starlight Beacon. The space station travels from system to system in the Outer Rim, offering aid from more Nile attacks. A team of Nile are able to sneak aboard with the countless refugees, where they release several Shriekere. As the Jedi fall victim to their attacks, the Nile also sabotage Starlight Beacon so that it begins falling toward the planet below, Irem. Avar, Keeve, Emric, and Cyan all dock with the station, Ooh, rescuing as many people as they can, as well as recovering samples of one of the Eaters of the Force. Many Jedi are killed in the disaster, but the Jedi Master Stellan Geos sacrifices his life to ensure Starlight Beacon does not crash into any of Irem's cities. Lorna D takes the chance to escape once again. On Corellia, Wreath, Ram, and Yoda work together to thwart Nile agents who attempt to steal Corellian-built ships so they can attack any reinforcements sent- So Jedi aren't allowed to form attachment, so the reason why she refused knighthood was because, well, she wants to be in a relationship, and that's forbidden. Oh, uh, okay. ...to the remains of the doomed space station. The Jedi Order is recalled from the Outer Rim back to Coruscant to assess the growing danger of the Nile and the Shriekere. In their absence, Markeon sets up a network of devices called Storm Seeds, created from the research done on the gravity's heart. These new inventions destroy any ship attempting to enter Nile territory. Markeon announces his intent to take control of whatever piece of the galaxy he pleases, having proven that neither the Republic nor the Jedi can stop him. Markeon Ro, his Nile, and the Eaters of the Force are eventually defeated, but the Republic and the Jedi Order are both forever changed by the experience. A droid named Ajax Sigma breaks free of its programming, becoming a droid revolutionary. He kills thousands of organics in a quest to emancipate more droids until the Jedi defeat him and remove his neural core. As the Galactic Republic's Golden Age hey. comes to an end, Yoda takes a new Padawan named Dooku. Yay! Hey. Yoda and Dooku! Yeah, this is the bit I know. Well, even this bit I don't know much about, but the Clone Wars I do, and that's getting closer. Did you learn some things? I did. I don't want to run into those planets I've learned. I didn't know they had deadly plants. The drain gear. I thought it was just aliens and humans. I didn't think deadly plants was a thing. Honey, this is Star Wars. Anything's possible. Okay, so it's like Warhammer. Anything's possible. Okay, yeah, fair one. <laughs> but everyone, thank you for watching. Uh, part two will be uploaded in another day. Um, what well, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Let's go. Time to grind. Get inside your mind. Yeah, we working overtime. That's the only way to climb. We gon' make it in our prime. Signing on the dotted line. Cashing checks left and right. That's the way I'm living life. Uh. I feel alive when I got a goal in sight. Chip away, I gotta fight. Hey.